All right. Okay, hi everyone. My name is Mihai Donsu. I work at Bitdefender and I'm uh, currently involved in a, uh, a commercial security product using the introspection features of Xen. It's uh, that commercial part that Andy's trying to do without, probably because I haven't delivered a build supporting Xen 4.9 <laughs> in a while, even though I promised it. All right, this is a third presentation in a series. Didn't intend it to turn that way, but here I am. Uh, for the past year or so, we've been uh, hardly at work. <laughs> we've been working on uh, improving the performance of uh, our product. And uh, we were thinking, okay, what underused Zen security feature can we leverage to uh, first class in our customers' data centers? And someone suggested VE, and then another one said, all right, hold my beer, and uh, here we are. I'll uh, talk a little bit, uh, for those of you who haven't seen my uh, other presentations, talk about uh, our work. I'm going to explain why V is for people who are not really connected to the x86 uh, universe. I'll uh, talk about the performance improvements that can be done on V, our specific use case and the uh, state in uh, Zen. So around uh, 2014, we started pestering uh, Andrew and Jan with some patches extended, extending the existing VMI infrastructure. Uh, after many internal demos in 2015, we decided, okay, we can go ahead and uh, try to build a security product. In 2016, we actually pushed something to our partners and got uh, very encouraging feedback. And in 2017, we went all out with a an actual release uh, with the help of some very good people at Citrix. And uh, using uh, Citrix Zen Server 7.0, we made our uh, security offering available to everyone that wants to try it. So what are virtualized exceptions, or hash V for short? They were presented by uh, Ravi Sahita and Jun Nakajima. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing the name correctly. I'm sorry if I messed it up. In 2014, I think it was uh, Chicago, uh, it offered two use cases. Uh, one for, was uh, for speeding up the uh, networking operations in a virtual uh, machine, and uh, another one was right up our alley, speeding up introspection. Uh, virtualized exceptions work hand in hand with uh, VM, works hand in hand with uh, VM Funk, or Alt P2E, uh, P2M uh, in Zen. Uh, VM Funk showed up, I believe, in Haswell, and the last bit, virtualized exception, was became part of uh, the Broadwell microarchitecture. The the thing with uh, virtualized exception. Is that they allow converting uh, exceptions that would normally trigger VM exits into simple guest interrupts, uh, giving the ability to handle these exceptions in the context of a guest. It avoids a VM exit, which is uh, pretty costly. It has quite uh, some overhead. Uh, currently, only EPT violations can be converted to virtualized exceptions. Um, these exceptions use the previously unused. Uh, vector, Vector20, they um, require enabling, specific enabling in VMCS, uh, <coughs> clearing a um, uh, V bit in every paging structure, EPT paging structure of interest, and then the guest just sets an information area where the processor puts in uh, details about the exception and implement the handler. So what are the performance opportunities in, uh, for improvement here. Um, our VMA product, uh, VMI product, relies heavily on uh, EPT violations. And uh, one of the things it does is uh, monitor the page tables created inside the guest. And these page tables are the source of many such violations. Uh, thousands of them per second during normal guest operation 
even more when there's serious workload inside it. In, uh, in <coughs> the design of our product is in such a way that uh, the application, the security application runs in a separate virtual machine, uh, which obviously involves quite a path from the guest that triggers the event to the other VM that handles the uh, violations. So we've, right now, the code path appears quite fast. We've managed to uh, get up to a 20% performance penalty, but obviously we're looking for something even better and believe VE, hash VE, uh, is what can get us to below 10%. So what we plan to do with hash VE is pre-validate EPT violations and suppress those violations that are no interest to us, such as those triggered by uh, AD bit flips, and the rest that are of importance convert to VM, fun uh, VM calls and uh, send to the VM in which the security application runs. In our specific case, what we do is inject a tiny agent inside the guest, protect it via EPT, make sure nothing inside the guest can touch it, clone the IDT. We did this because on, for example, 64-bit windows, there's this feature that periodically checks the integrity of the IDT. So putting in the handle for vector 20 would create quite a bug check. And uh, so we clone it, we install the vector, we mark for the, the EPT entries that match the mapping for, of, uh, for the guest uh, page tables, the guest, the page tables set by the kernel for itself or for the applications. Handle or V uh, or virtualize exceptions that uh, have a source as a source the flips of uh, access disabled uh, dirty bits. And then uh, pass to the VMI application, the actual security product, everything else, you know, changes to driver objects, possibly patches to the kernel code, who knows. We, these, this perform these performance numbers have been uh, uh, gathered with uh, a, an internal hypervisor we use to patch left and right every time we want to uh, test a new technology. Uh, so for Google Chrome, uh, it's, it's not very clear here because the lines overlap, but the red line indicates all EPT violations triggered uh, while Google Chrome runs, and the blue line that should be right beneath it uh, represents the EPT violations that have been suppressed, EPT violations that we don't care about, just as I said, AD bit flips. So in the, ca in the specific case, the performance improvement is way above uh, 50%. For Mozilla, the, situations, the situation is a bit more complicated. Uh, it allocates a huge chunk of heap, which splits into uh, even little, well, little smaller chunks. Uh, each one of them can be executable or not. Apparently, the JavaScript engine uses it to, uh, for uh, just-in-time code generation. So it looks kind of wonky, but uh, even with this, uh, I'd say, unusual behavior, the V agent can reach almost 50% performance improvement. The current status in Zen, uh, in Around Zen 4.6, or exactly in Zen 4.6, the initial alt pet to m and uh, v code went into uh, went into the source tree. Uh, there have been several patches to alt pet to m uh, fixing or improving things. And uh, in 2017, we started uh, looking very hard at using this feature. Um, we extended. Or there are two patches currently on Zen Devel that are still uh, being discussed. Uh, one of them uh, plans to extend the function that we, a hypercall that we added, set my access multi, and simply adds a view ID that allows uh, flip controlling the access bits for views other than the root one. <coughs> and the other call, alt p 2 m 
uh, set suppress V, which controls the uh, V bit uh, from a separate domain other than the guest itself. There's a little bit of an issue here because the way Intel designed it, uh, it allowed the guest to play with the V bit. And obviously, in our use case, having the guest interfere with it will, will be pretty, pretty bad. So we're looking, we're still discussing of a, a way to satisfy uh, both our needs and uh, the use case that uh, Intel had in mind. We, in 2018, early 2018, or hopefully the end of 2017, we plan to integrate it and maybe push it to our customers. I might be overly optimistic, but uh, it's probably what got me here. And uh, I think I've been doing pretty good with time. If you have any questions, I might not have the answer, but. That's okay, it's just the way I like it. <laughs> All right. Yes, it is injected inside the guest. Via the hypervisor by the security application. <laughs> okay. Uh, for the purpose of the recording, so I'm going to ask them my question again. Uh, so is the so the agent is inside a guest, right? Yes. Uh, so who ingests the agent? The security application running a separate VM, which we call security virtual appliance. Thank you. Okay, I could answer that one. Okay. All right. I think I'm done here. <laughs>